still recovering from my sickness. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel and today I wanted to review the dreaded low files <laughs> for you guys with Rob Lowe and his kids. I only watched the first episode. I tweeted about it slightly. Let's get to it. So the very first episode is Rob Lowe and his sons and they're driving in a truck and they're going to go investigate a place called the Preston Castle which is in California. It was a boys reformatory in the 1880s, 1800s and it's basically where child convicts would go. Um, but I mean they could go there for anything little even like stealing a loaf of bread They would be put in this like boys home. There were a lot of murders that took place inside of the castle Boys would gang up on other boys and kill them and all the other things that are involved They would create many like democracies or many governments inside the boys home and they would go against each other and murder each other The older boys it was very much like Rob Lowe says it's like Lord of the Flies inside of this reformatory so as they are driving um, we're not really quite sure who is who. So Rob is driving in the driver's seat and then his two sons, I think his oldest son is in the front seat and his younger son is in the back seat. And my first cue for knowing this was going to be a long show. His oldest son said, I'm sure that there's a lot of kids that are stuck there, you know, their spirits are stuck there because they probably also died from disease. And his youngest son says, why would you assume lots of kids died from disease? And the oldest son goes because it was the 1800s and they didn't have a lot of medicine back then. And he had this look like, oh. So they're driving along. They're basically showing road footage of them going to the location. By the way, Rob Lowe also did this like sly name drop of like, you know, and I know it's a parent's job to brag about their kids. But he said like one of, you know, my son goes to Duke and the other one goes somewhere else. I can't remember. And I was like, wow, Rob, uh, way to humble brag. Uh. I'm like, maybe they're gonna give Rob like a teacher's lounge named the Rob Low Lounge or the Low Lounge if he name drops the school. I was like, sly, uh, really under the radar there, real sly, sneaking in there. So now we're getting a vibe for what the boys are. So his oldest son in the front seat is obviously kind of really interested in this. He's going in as a kind of skeptic, but he's also a believer, which I like that. Now the kid in the back seat, I'm not, you know, really fond of, I guess you could say. So he states, what makes us different than any other idiots that investigate. Us different from any other idiot who's taking cameras into haunted mansions and castles and whatever. Really? Ah, oh, we are not clued in about the paranormal community at all here, are we? You would think one would research before one begins a paranormal series, especially the fact that Rob Lowe says he watches all the ghost shows and he loves them. So I'm like, all right, this is a cue that this show and this series is not for paranormal enthusiasts. This is for people that are just fans of Rob Lowe. People that are real paranormal enthusiasts can't take this series serious, unfortunately. By the way, to Rob Lowe's son, people that investigate are not idiots. But because you said that statement puts you in our category with us. Because I guess technically you could say that we're crazy for wanting to go investigate and collect data in the dark. But you did it too, so I guess that puts you in our category, doesn't it? So they're bringing a shaman, Rob says, to bring out the ghosts. Because <sighs> he said that's never been done before and he wants to do it. Oh, God. That's why you're bringing a shaman? Okay. And then his son states again in the back seat, Why isn't there any definitive proven, you know, footage of ghosts. And I'm like, oh God, have you ever seen like a paranormal show? Like, do you even know about the data collection that we've collected? Do you know about the hundreds of videos that have been captured of 
poltergeist activity? You're telling me there is no definitive proof of ghosts? Okay. So then their mom calls, she calls Rob, says that she's afraid that they're all going to get possessed by a ghost. And I'm like, oh, this is so like, welcome to amateur hour because I'm bored. So even mom says that she texted the shaman to make sure that, you know, the shaman keeps her husband and boys safe. And I'm like, oh, this is painful. Here we go again, painful. She also asked, the mother of the two boys, the Rob Lowe's wife, also asked the shaman to make sure that no ghosts sleep in the same room as her sons to keep them safe. So I didn't like that they had a K2 meter immediately because those just aren't the best. They also had one of those little ghost meters. Those aren't very good either. You shouldn't be using those for actual data collection. Then, Rob shows that he has an ovulus and then he holds up the PSB7 and talks about the ovulus. Oh, God. That's, that's the greatest. So, John, the deal with the ovulus is you can ask the ghost questions and... Pretty sure that's a spirit box, not an ovulus. Here we go again. Here we go again. The one thing I also found just disrespectful again is his youngest son, as Rob is talking about the ovulus and what the ovulus does and that voices come through the box, his son is like profusely laughing, like mocking it. And I'm like, is this kid like forced to be on this show? Like he doesn't even, like he's mocking the whole thing. He, he called ghost hunters idiots. He doesn't want to be there. So why are y'all making him be there? You know what I mean? Like he doesn't, he just isn't enjoying himself at all. Then Rob Lowe says, talking about finding a ghost voice makes me sound like and I quote, an insane person. Well, good job. You guys have continued in the first 10 minutes to kick the paranormal community over and over in the cojones. So thank you. We, we appreciate being called idiots and insane people since that's what we do. I just feel like at this point, and I'm literally maybe 15 minutes in, that none of them really take ghost hunting serious and it's kind of like a joke, so... You're not going to be respected by the paranormal community, so it's kind of like, well, this is definitely a show for Rob Lowe's fans, and he has no idea what he's doing when it comes to paranormal. How does Rob expect the audience to take him serious when he just bashed the paranormal audience, and then he just discredited himself by calling himself insane to be discussing finding data or collecting ghost voices. So it's kind of like, all right, you want us to take you serious? You don't even take yourself serious, obviously. He once again says paranormal is insane. I literally wrote down the show is for Rob's fan base, not for the paranormal community. He says that he's losing his mind talking about it and thinking about it. And then the, the younger son once again decides to say that ghost hunting and the idea of Paranormal investigating is, quote, ludicrous. So they think that all of us are crazy for liking paranormal. So, okay, keep kicking the paranormal community right in the cojones. Keep it going. We can take another couple before we change the channel. So I noticed that their camera keeps doing this weird flare thing, and I realize they're using a full-spectrum DSLR to do their B-roll and their interview footage during the day, which is what's causing this weird camera flare. So I'm like... We're on a budget, apparently. We're on a budget even though Rob Lowe is a huge actor and should have plenty of money to get some decent, even lower in price ghost gear and we're still on a budget. Basically, it looks like with the DSLR and the full spectrum camera, they have switched the lens out. You can do that, it's very easy um, to basically go from like night vision or full spectrum to regular vision and uh, just been better off getting two cameras, one for interviews and B-roll and one for ghost hunting, but they didn't. Welcome to Amateur Hour. We're also using some iPhone footage, which actually I'm going to say that I respect Rob using iPhone footage, and that's because he really means that he's interested. This just happened right now. I'm going to talk about it to you through my phone. So I'm going to say I actually respect that he used that because I have been in instances where I need my iPhone to use as footage. So I, I respect that more than the DSLR footage. 
I also have to learn to believe that using a handy cam when we do selfie shots as paranormal investigators, it's an art, right? Like there's an art to it. You really have to do it properly so that you're looking at the camera and you're documenting what you're saying. And not everybody can do that. It does take practice. So I'll let them slide this time with not having handy cams and getting decent um, selfie footage. So the b-roll of course was spot on. It was great. The history was great. The walkthrough was good So I'm really happy with all of that the way that it went except the shaman comes in his name is shaman John and he says That an EVP is a voice recording of the paranormal and I'm like, well, I guess that's a very simplistic way to explain it I just was hoping that if they were bringing the shaman in, he would know a little bit more about ghost hunting and somebody would show some professionalism with it and we keep misfiring. So the young kid through like the walkthrough of the location, the younger son, he's just like nervous, you can tell, because he's like got his hands in his pockets and he's kind of jolting and he's just got like inappropriate laughter all over the place. He's just like sporadically laughing. Which when you're in a haunted location, when you've been, you're around energies that could have died, violent deaths, um, and just talking with the innkeeper or the owner of the location, I just feel like laughter is really inappropriate. Unless like there's a good energy and you guys can joke about stuff, but for him to just be like sporadically like mocking the location and, and the, the history of it, I was just kind of, I was really disappointed that like he once again doesn't want to be there. So I don't know why he's there. I'm going to be personally, I'm going to say a personal opinion and say that when people act like that, it's usually because they're actually scared or really nervous. So I, would, I wouldn't doubt that he was actually really scared to be in a haunted location. And he was coming across as kind of being arrogant and, and kind of, can I say jackass on YouTube? So it's interesting, Shaman John is from Sedona, and that's right next to Jerome. So right when he gave his credentials, I was like, cool, this guy knows his stuff because Sedona is very haunted, it's very spiritual. They have these like energy portals all over the place. And so I was really impressed that they brought someone from Sedona. So like A plus to Shaman John for that. Except then like Rob Lowe says a statement like, oh, so all the crazy people live in Sedona where you're from and I'm like, Dude, like you guys with the insane comments and the crazy comments and the the ludicrous comments, like if y'all don't like paranormal that much and like you're making fun of it and writing it off as a bunch of like lunatics, then why are you guys doing it yourselves? You're, you're coming into our category with us, so that means you're calling yourself that. I just thought it was really inappropriate to say that and talk that way, not only to Sean, you know, Shaman John, who's from there, but just to the paranormal community in general. We don't like when people, um, you know, talk badly about us saying that we're crazy. We are perfectly fine. We just have an interest in the dead. And so I just thought it was really disrespectful and I found it odd considering Rob Lowe claims he has done research and watched almost every paranormal show out there. So then they cut to footage of the two brothers and Rob talking about you know, how they're gonna break up um, the investigation. And the oldest brother says, um, you know, let's try to do this so that we can communicate with them. And then the youngest brother says, specifically who? Like meaning, who are you talking about? And then the older brother says, the spirits. And the younger brother's like, oh. And I'm like, dude, you're so disrespectful. Like, who is this kid? Does, it, does he want to go back to Duke? Is he afraid he's going to, like, you know, be embarrassed in front of his classmates and his college roomies that he's on a paranormal show? Because if that's the case, then he should have never came along to begin with. So they start the investigation. There's a room where this little girl was supposedly strangled to death, okay? They're using the ovulus. And the ovulus says, beat. And the older kid goes, wow, it said beat. You know, the little girl died of strangulation. And the younger son comes in and he's like, you're building a narrative. You're building a narrative. You're making it up and building a narrative. Okay, well, wait a second. Have you guys been trained on an ovulus and you understand that there's only so many words within the dictionary? I highly doubt that strangled is in the dictionary. Actually, you know what? Let me just, let me just look it up really quick. Okay, there is 2,048 words in the dictionary. Actually, that's the ovulus five. I think they were using the ovulus three. So let me just make sure it's the same. 
Okay, they were using the ovulus three. I can't find how many words are in that. But because the little girl was strangled, let's look up. I have the dictionary literally right here. I don't think, I don't know if you can see it. It's all these words. So I'm just gonna look up for the word strangled because the girl was strangled. And I'll tell you what my point is about this in one minute. So the word strangle is in there. The word, the word strangled is not. And the word beat is in there and, and the word beat came up. My point of this conversation is, yes, it could be potentially building a narrative, but if the girl was strangled to death, there's a highly possibility and chance that she was also beat to death, obviously, right? Like, I don't know of anybody that wouldn't just get violent and shake. Maybe that's what she considered was the beat. I feel like they should have gone on a little further with that investigation, but they didn't. Since the boy, the youngest son of Rob, disregarded the fact that it was he was making up a narrative, they walked away and stopped the investigation. I was so disappointed in that because I feel like there was something that could have you know, kept going if they would have tried a little harder. I don't think it was building a narrative. I think that since it was the first and only word that had come through, that maybe they were getting used to using that piece of equipment. Remember I told you guys when you're taking equipment into a location where there hasn't been a lot of ghost investigators, you sometimes have to to explain to the energies how to use it. You need to walk up to this, manipulate the energy so that the words can come out that you're thinking, feeling, or that you're putting out EMFs into the atmosphere. And they didn't do that either. Was it building a narrative? Well, they didn't get very far, so I can't determine that. And I'm sad that it was completely disregarded immediately. I highly doubt that either of the boys, including Rob, know that there's only a 2,000 word dictionary inside of the ovulus and if names come through those names are not in the dictionary and so I was really sad that obviously they didn't educate themselves and, and nobody educated them what an ovulus is and what it does and they just kind of disregarded it and walked away. I noticed while they started ghost hunting they were using regular footage with the lights on so I don't know if that's because they didn't have ghost hunting equipment um, or if they didn't have night vision, but they were using the lights on. So there's a highly possibility for part of their investigation. The reason they were not getting a lot of evidence was because they had the lights on. I don't know why, but there is something about the energies that like to be in the dark. I'm not sure if they're afraid of the light, if they're afraid they'll be pushed towards the light, you know, or crossing over. But there is a reason that we ghost hunt at night and there's a reason that we get the best evidence at night and that's because there's lights off. Also, I, there's theories behind the energies of the lights or just the energy in general of the light is too powerful for energies to be able to communicate with you. So was that the purpose of them not getting really good evidence? I don't know. So now they're moving on to this next scene which is Shaman John finds out that on top of the hill there was an old burial ground of the Native Americans where this location is and that he's gonna do a ceremony to attempt to release the, any energies that are trapped there. So when you're interacting or in the presence of a shaman, I feel like it is so important to be respectful because these people have studied with natives, it's very important to them, it's very holy to them, and Rob's son, and his name I finally found out, um, John Owen is the younger son. He's sitting there laughing at the shaman do his ritual, like he couldn't believe what he was doing. And I just thought it was so disrespectful on so many levels. One, if there are native spirits there or just regular spirits there, you're laughing at them. Two, you're laughing at a shaman. That's like going into a church and laughing at a priest. Would you do that? Like, do you think it's funny? I just couldn't believe how disrespectful he is. So at this point into the show, I just pretty much don't like this character. I think that he is douchey. I think he doesn't want to be there. And I think he needs to go back to Duke and hang out with his college buddies so that he doesn't feel weird and awkward on a television series that his dad probably horked a lot of money over to make. So I just feel like, you know, we need to find some respect here. Is that too much to ask? So then the older son is like doing this investigation inside of the big castle and while they're talking, all of a sudden the light in this other room near the elevator starts going on and off all by itself. Great piece of evidence, thought it was awesome. They were too chicken to go investigate to see what it was, um, which I was really sad later on. Um, I think that the shaman and the one kid play a joke on Rob and the other son 
And so then it makes you think, was the light going on and off a joke? Like, you just don't know how it was edited, you know what I mean? Like, who's in charge of post-production? Did they make it look real? You don't really know. I hate to say it, but they've kind of discredited themselves from the beginning, so then it kind of makes you wonder the evidence they're getting, is it legitimate or not? If it was real, I was impressed with the older son. He was really good at talking and hosting. He was very calm. And I felt like he really has like an actual interest for this. And I was just really impressed by him. They also captured the ball moving with the shaman. So the older son is with the shaman and they captured the ball moving on tape. And I was really impressed by that too. It was a great capture for them. So his credibility went up in my book for you know that show. They did capture a shot of John Owen, which is the young um, brother, chewing gum on camera. What are you doing? Did you not learn anything from your dad who is like this mega star that's been in a lot of movies? You can't chew gum on film. What are you doing? Where's your dad to coach you on this stuff? But then the, the kid, I told you I think he's actually really scared, this John Owen. He gets scared and thinks something's at the window and then he has to put his flashlight in the window to look out it. So that tells you that he's obviously really afraid and he's just being inappropriate out of fear is really what's happening. As crazy as that sounds, I've seen it happen even with investigators that I've hired. They're not prepared for what they're about to do and instead of taking it serious, they're like laughing or making jokes. So I really think that in, in all seriousness, he was scared, he was afraid. Eventually, one of the meters they have, I can't remember which one they had, it went off and the kid, John Owen, the young kid, starts to shake. You can tell he's shaking like it scared him. Like he came into contact with something. So finally, we're starting to see a change in little John Owen here because he, he wasn't the nicest character to follow around for a minute. I was sad to see they have camera text and audio text on set. Um, so that's obviously not just them doing it raw themselves. So finally, when they head down into the basement, John, the young kid, actually starts to get interested in the series or interested in the investigation. And he kind of pulls the stick out of his you know what, and he actually starts contributing to the show and I was like cool when you're into it it makes the audience into it when you don't like what you're doing we don't want to watch you either took 30 minutes into the show for me to actually like him after before that I was pretty much annoyed with him at the whole time so then we skip to the next scene which is the kid John Owen has one of those light up like meters where it turns like green and red and so he says he's not convinced of the voices coming through the ovulus or the spirit box, but he is convinced of the green and blue little Q EMF meter. He likes colors. That's the only way we can get him involved, guys, is he needs some colors. I think that's like an EMF thing you can buy on the ghosthunterstore.com. I don't own it. I don't want it. It's not one of the best pieces of equipment to capture evidence on. Um, for scientific data collection, but hey, he likes colors, it worked, it got him interested. It's almost like a fancier version of a REM pod and um, he loves it and he basically uses it over and over for the rest of the night and he's actually capturing EMFs on it and he's being decent, but I'm laughing because he doesn't take the PSB7 series or the Ovulus, but he likes the glow up one. So I'm like, well, you know, to each his own. His theory was that because the Ovulus didn't go off all day, it didn't work. But this went off immediately and that's why he agrees with this REM pod function. Ugh. He says it's legit. He says it's legit. I'm like, oh God. He's literally a character that's from college that is embarrassed to be on TV and he's trying to be cool so that all of his friends at Duke do not judge him for what he's doing. I did laugh because the shaman comes in, the PSB 7's going off, he holds it up to Rob's ear like it's a phone and they're like, they're like, yeah, yeah, I hear it, yeah. Like you guys, like, it's not a phone, guys. Like, Rob, I thought you've seen shows. Like, I thought you've seen some of these shows. Like, have you not connected to and to and figured out how to use it? Or do we need some someone to come in and train you on the PSB 11, PSB 7? I don't know. And then there was a scene where they put the PSB 7, which is the spirit box, right next to a ghost meter, which is an EMF meter, and it goes off. Well, of course it's going to go off, you guys. It's electric magnetic field that's being connected between the two receptors, and we talked about this in physics. So they're like, it's shocked it went off, and I'm like, ugh. So by the end of it, Rob says that he felt like he was around real people. They weren't ghosts, they were just real energies of real people. 
which I respected that statement because that means maybe he went in not as respectful and they came out respecting it more. So I'll give him credit for that. Honestly, I really felt like this is just a way to get his kids in film. I know they're gonna do stuff like aliens and they're gonna do like um, Sasquatch investigations, but I really can't help but feel like this was a way to get his kids involved with film. Um, it's more like watching Rob's adventures with his children than it is a serious show. And so I guess if you wanted to go out to go camping or to have these weird random experiences, then this is a show to watch. But if you're taking it serious from like a paranormal perspective when they can't even get the ghost gear right, uh, I don't think I'll be watching again. Honestly, I considered it to be a amateur version of Destination Truth with Josh Gates, except Josh Gates and Destination Truth is way better, like 100% better, but this is like an amateur version of it. I think the next one they did was um, an alien investigation. I didn't watch the second one. It's a great show all in all for Rob Lowe fans. Is it something I'm interested in watching again? Not really, mainly because the young son pretty much acts like he doesn't want to be there. I hope his attitude improves because he doesn't look like he's very happy. Like maybe he was forced by Rob to you know, be a part of the series. They did capture some good evidence though, even though they weren't planning on it. So I am really proud of them for that. What did you guys think of the low files? Did you like it? Did you see it? Make sure you guys give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Make sure you guys follow me on social media and I will catch you guys next time.